The next step before we go sweep is to top the tanks off with water. The R4 Air has a 280 gallon water capacity. Those tanks are located at the back of the machine. If you ever have to drain them off for any reason, if you look down, you're gonna see there's a drain port at the lowest point of the plug. That plug just pulls out, it's an expansion type plug. Plug it back in. If you see any water leaking or anything like that, you can screw that to tighten that up within the tank itself. Underneath the fender is where we locate the hose for filling. The machine typically comes standard with a 15 foot fill hose. We'll unroll that fill hose and we'll tie into the hydrant. At that point, we turn the hydrant on. You will notice that we have a ball valve at the water fill system on this machine and actually most of the machines that we build have some form of a ball valve in here. The reason we do that is you're going to notice this red hose depending on the direction that I have the valve located I'm either filling the water tank or I'm using the hydrant to flush either the hood, the hopper or on a mechanical sweep or the elevator. Okay so make sure you have that ball valve in the water fill position. You'll see a sticker right here located uh, that's telling you which direction to make sure that you have that handle. As you're filling this I want you to note that you want to have that hydrant all the way on but we do actually plumb that down as it fills the tank. The reason we do that are these are poly tanks so they rotationally mold those and they have seams in them. If you were to fill this at too high of a pressure and walk away and you start to overflow that the water doesn't escape the breather fast enough and you can actually crack and split that tank. It's your responsibility to make sure that you're close to the machine when you're filling so as you do start to see any kind of overflow coming out over the wheel or out of the breather at the rear panel that you're there to turn that hydrant off. The water pumps are located at the rear of the machine. I can move this oil cooler out of the way again and I can locate those pumps. So you're going to notice two water pumps located down here. Now in the cab you have a switch when you operate that you can run one or both pumps. It's just simply a high or low switch. Okay, if I want to uh, save some water I can run just a single pump on low or I can engage on high and run both pumps. Off to the side of the water pumps for any reason if I ever had to uh, drain the entire water system on the machine you're going to notice a purge switch. I can actually drain all the lines on this machine without ever actually turning the machine on if I needed to winter, winterize it, uh, do any kind of checks, anything like that with the tanks. Okay. Um, last but not least, please notice that we do have the water strainer located here. Now make note that this water strainer actually sits at a high point on the tank. The reason that's a big deal is because when these water tanks are full I don't have to drain that water off to do a strainer check. I'm not going to lose all that water. And you'll notice in here, here's a great example, this being a newer machine, uh, when they actually make and rotationally mold these tanks, holes are drilled for all the fittings to go into the water tanks and you'll get some of the plastic shavings inside that tank. We do everything we can to flush that out and get them out of the way but you never get them all. So especially while it's new, do more checks on this and you're going to notice even some of the little black sediment that's in there. Clean that out. You do have a little o-ring in here on this globe and we do not want to lose that o-ring. Make sure that that always gets put back in and then screw your cap back on. If you do not have that o-ring when you screw that back on when you go to run the pumps you can pull air into the system and sometimes you have issues uh, uh, basically uh, purging the water system. Okay. So continuing with the water system you're going to notice inside the cab behind the training seat, when I flip the training seat forward, three ball valves located in the cab. They're labeled from top to bottom. If you look, the top handle is labeled left gutter broom, the second is right gutter broom, and the third is the front spray bar. The operator has the ability, while he's out sweeping, to control where the flow from those pumps are going. So if the majority of the, the debris is in the curb line or at the front of the sweeper, we can actually uh, dial some of the water back on the left just to conserve water. You will notice some blue lines on this machine. This machine is equipped with PM10. So what that's doing is that's going to control the finest of the dust. Anytime that we have the water pumps turned on on these machines, these nozzles from these blue lines are on and they're creating a, uh, a dust curtain around the brooms. Anywhere where dirt can come out and escape anything that's that's light enough for you and I to breathe. 
this will turn on to contain the very, very small particles. Now checking my water nozzles, you're gonna notice we have two nozzles on the, on the right gutter broom and two on the left. These just have a brass tip. It's a nylon uh, nut with a brass tip on the inside. On occasion, make sure you do to take those out. Make sure that they're clean and the water is flowing. You're also gonna notice that this should put the water down uh, like a fan. So you can actually turn these directionally to make sure that that is spreading the, the right way in front of the broom that you need it to. Again, two tips at each gutter broom, and if you go to the front spray bar of the machine, you're gonna find the exact same thing with five tips. To the inside of this panel, you're gonna see a blue water line with a ball valve that's actually injecting water uh, to, to the, uh, the regeneration intake back into the fan. Now, because the air in a regenerative air sweeper actually does regenerate, which means it runs in a loop through the entire machine, we want to use as much water as possible without creating too much slurry to make sure that the, the dust and anything that can actually uh, clog your fan housing or damage your fan is knocked out before it gets there. So Global actually equips the machine with a ball valve that you can turn on or off. I typically recommend that you keep this one on to inject a, a spray mist at the top of that neck at that intake so that as any debris could possibly make its way through the dust separator, that will catch and contain that dirt and instead of going back in your impeller, it'll drop out towards the bottom of the fan housing. We do have an access point to go ahead and clean that out. You're gonna notice this red handle and when I pop that red handle, it opens a plunger down at the bottom of the fan housing and that allows for the dirt and the water to escape from that fan housing. But again, I suggest you keep that on whenever possible. Similar to that, you're gonna notice another ball valve back here with a couple of blue water lines. These lines are actually there to inject any water into the dust separator itself. Whenever possible, keep this one turned off. And the drier that I can get that material into that dust separator, it eliminates the mud and the slurry that can build up in there. However, it's here for a reason. If you need it, if you're in a very, very, very uh, dusty application, you have a lot of people around, a lot of traffic around, and you can't be creating a big dust cloud going down the road, make sure you do come out, make sure you do open this up and inject water to knock that debris and dust down within the dust separator.